Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Ratitude Podcast. Today's episode is just going to be me, the guest I had lined up. Something happened. It didn't work out. So you get me. And I was thinking this morning. So this morning I woke up and I had a uh, hypnosis client, a hypnotherapy session with uh, someone that wants to uh, lose weight. And it's one of the actually um, more challenging hypnosis issues to work with because it's a very deep-seated uh, thing. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is a journey that I guess I have been preparing for and being on and delving into for a while now. And, and now it's going to really happen. And if you remember that book or the, the movie, Eat, Pray, Love, I think that's what I'm doing. I am here in California in Santa Barbara um, at my daughter's um, and son-in-law's home. It's a, a beautiful place uh, near the ocean, near the lot that I'm going to build my dream house in uh, in in the world in Santa Barbara. But the permitting is going to be uh, challenging, but I'm going to get it. Someone's been trying to permit this lot for 65 years, and I believe that I'm the right person to get it because it is just meant to be. Do you know how sometimes things you just know within you are just meant to be? And this is one of those things. It's on a street called El Camino de la Luz, which is Path of the Light. I found this lot on my daughter's birthday. I was up here in Santa Barbara and taking her out for uh, breakfast or lunch first. And then we went and got her a birthday gift and then found the site for her wedding reception. And and then uh, in the afternoon before dinner with the two of them, I went and uh, looked for places to live and came upon this lot. And it took a, a few months, but I was able to uh, purchase it and dream about it. But from the moment I saw it, I knew that it was mine. I could see living there and enjoying life and eating there, praying there and loving there. So why do I need to leave? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going down to a Dr. Joe Dispenza advanced follow-up um, here tomorrow. It starts on Friday and I'm excited about that too because I'm part of the research group. I'm going to get hooked up with electrodes. They're going to study my brain and figure out what's going on in there and that's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to get some healings. Then on Monday after it's over, I'm going to go to uh, Colorado to take my son to a Denver Nuggets game versus the San Antonio Spurs. So we're going to get to uh, see that big tall dude, five or seven foot five wombo or... The French guy. Can't remember his name. <laughs> Not that into the, the, the basketball. Although I do love the Nuggets. And uh, then I'm going to come back here and from here fly to Vietnam. And, and then I'm not sure what's going to happen. In Vietnam, by the way, there are still a couple spots, I believe, on that Vietnam trip. If anyone wants to join us, I'm going to be teaching... Um, all sorts of cool things there from uh, Joe Dispenza to Tony Robbins to Abraham Hicks to Gene Keys to all sorts of things. I guarantee you for the people that come, life will never be the same again. And with each session, each, each, each training, I always use hypnosis to then solidify you know, the learnings into people's subconscious, because as you probably know, we oftentimes go to all these personal development trainings. We learn some stuff and we think it's the coolest thing in the world and we need to implement it. And it lasts for like, you know, a month or two or three, maybe longer sometimes, but it doesn't last forever. But uh, one of the things that I do is I use hypnosis to put the key learnings into your subconscious and then it can last forever. Wouldn't that be cool? And we've got such an amazing group of people coming. I think that's that's the best part of it is just being around amazing people and the adventures that we've got lined up. It's like a Tony Robbins Platinum Partner trip. Unique things. We're going to go uh, eat snake and jump off things and flying things and riding things and do a lot of contemplation and a lot of personal development and go deep, go deep. It's a spiritual journey. So if you want to join me, come join me. Anyway, I do not have a return trip um, lined up. I don't, I don't have a ticket home. I'm just going to go over there. And after this event's done, it's an 11 day trip. I'm going to see where life is going to take me, where the clues, the, the serendipity the Celestine prophetiness of it is, and just go there. I know I, I'm going to go to Bali. That's someplace I've never been that I've always wanted to go. That's on my bucket list. And I know it's a very spiritual community. So I'm going to go there and do some meditations or silent retreats or 
detox or something. I don't know. I'm just going to go there and see what beautiful experiences I can find. And so I was, I was thinking about that, or maybe someone mentioned it to me that eat, you're going on an eat, pray, love kind of thing, aren't you? I hadn't really thought about that, but I guess that I am doing that. So we'll see what happens. But one of the things that uh, in the last few weeks that I've been really thinking about is the concept of, of triggers in relationships and contemplating my life. I'm triggered by a lot of things. I've talked about it in this podcast. I'm triggered by those really slow drivers in Naples, Florida. <laughs> in fact, I almost don't want to live there because of those slow riders. But it's, it just triggers me. And dealing with triggers is something that's really important to do. And I learned this six or seven step process that I think is kind of cool that I wanted to share with you today. And it's that, you know, sometimes when you're triggered, when you become aware of this, because, you know, it used to be I wasn't aware that I was triggered. I just was. And then, you know, whatever happened, happened. For me, my childhood wound has to do with feeling like I did something wrong, but my my defense child is shutting down. I get real quiet. And it has caused all sorts of uh, problems in my life. I thought it was a good thing to do at the time. It seemed like a good strategy. And then it didn't seem like a good strategy, but I couldn't do anything about it. It's it's so programmed into my subconscious. It's one of the reasons hypnos hypnosis is really good. But also kind of having an intellectual understanding of where it comes from. And I'm starting to really understand that it comes from my attachment style. And it comes from you know this concept of triggering, which is really a process to grow. And now I'm starting to change my thoughts and, and thinking about triggers that it's really growth opportunities. And so step one in this process is really that I'm triggered. I'm noticing it. And it, it's it's usually something for the past. And 90% of the time, it's, it's a trigger that was born in your childhood. It's not about the other people. It's not about those slow drivers in, in Naples or something, uh, you know, some family member did or an intimate partner might have done or a friend might have done. It's it's about me. And that's step number two is to recognize it's about me. And I'm, I'm at that point where I realize that these triggers, they're happening all the time. And if I want to change, I've got to change me. So it's about me. I'm taking responsibility, accountability, ownership, that this is about me. And that's one of the reasons I'm taking this sort of, I'm not going to call it eat, pray, love. That was someone else. I'm going to take this ratitude journey, right? <laughs> I've been on that. So step three is to think about what is the feeling? So what is the feeling that you get when you're triggered? Is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it loss? Is it sadness? Is it depression? What is it? It's something that I've been really contemplating around is is getting more in touch with my feelings. You know, guys, I think it's a lot easier for women. And I apologize for anyone if this is too stereotypy, but you know, I've always said, eh, I don't really feel that. I don't really feel that. Well, I do. But now just kind of getting in touch with that. Step number four is when do I remember earlier in my life when I might have been first having these kind of feelings? And I've been doing this interesting inner child work exercise where I am every morning and I've done now 28, almost straight. I missed one day, 28 straight days, except for one, <laughs> where I just kind of think about something from my childhood that was hurtful or I wouldn't call it trauma because I don't. But I guess that's the way psychologists call it. But it's something that was hurtful or triggered or caused sadness or loss or whatever. And I draw out these scenes. I've got uh, some colored pens now and I draw them out. So my, my little boy, you know, like when he got cut from the basketball team in seventh grade, it was really a sad time. So that's an example. I draw it out, you know, going to the tryouts. And then seeing, you know, trying out, then seeing the, the posting of the 10 boys that were selected to be on the team and mine wasn't on it. And then, you know, crying about it. But the, then the key thing is my adult self, and, and, and this is drawn. So I'm a little green guy and my adult person is a little bit darker green guy. And he goes and comforts my, my child. And I have to actually think about how do you, what are the right words that you use to comfort your child. But the important part is that it's the process of 
of adulting or reparenting. I've seen those phrases. I don't know if this is right or not. This is the way I'm going to define it. It is that becoming more and more an adult. And so recognizing when you're triggered, when we triggered, we go to our wounded child and we go to our defense of child. What we want to be able to do more often is to go to our adult person that can respond. And so this little seemingly crazy kind of silly process of drawing these out and then drawing my adult child responding to the or, or my adult responding to that that child who's sad and crying or hiding in a closet or um, whatever you know the response is by doing this i am training my mind in many ways i'm guess i'm hypnotizing myself or suggesting to myself that i can and should and want to be an adult and i don't know about you probably a lot of people are sitting there going yeah i'm already adult well i haven't been <laughs> i've been a child and uh you know I, I i remember seeing this meme a couple of different ways now where it says you know about trying to find an intimate partners is, is don't try to find someone that you can grow old with. Find someone that you can grow young with. And I think I've always been young, but now I need to be an adult, right? <laughs> Recognize that from that earlier time when you had that feeling, that triggered feeling, that a wound was established. And at this point, we we instilled an identity at that time or an attachment style. Oftentimes for people, it's it's, I'm not good enough. You know, like I get being cut from a basketball team, certainly I'm not good enough. Or seemingly a pattern for me is that I did something wrong. So I guess it could be I'm not good enough in that one, but it could be something I I did something wrong, like I didn't run the play right, or maybe I didn't pass right, or I didn't shoot, you know, with the right technique. I did something wrong. That seems to be the the pattern for a lot of mine. So as an adult, you kind of overdo that. And the next step is really to forgive yourself, to forgive yourself for doing something wrong or having those feelings and that then you have your adult show up and you comfort yourself. Even today I get, I get triggered all the time. You know, I drove to First Thousand Oaks and then to Malibu and, you know, there's traffic. Traffic must be a huge trigger for me. And, but I'm getting really a lot better because of this process. I'm learning to adult or reparent myself. And I'm using that time when I'm stuck in traffic or slow in traffic is to go to a place of contemplation. You know, I'm really into this gene keys thing right now. And it's, it's, it's not a prescriptive, this is who you are. It's really um, learning the art of contemplation. And uh, the first step is to uh, take pauses in life to contemplate uh, different things. And the first month's gene key or sphere was about your life's work. And so I spent a whole month thinking about my life's work and I'm getting such clarity. I'm going to create this incredible men's program uh, for 2025. And it's, it's going to incorporate all these things that I've been doing and connecting and pulling into uh, the creation of my future self. And so I'm really excited about that. But it became really clear through this contemplation during this month that that's what I'm meant to do. And, you know, living rad and loving contagiously. And I, I want to share the things that I've learned and experienced with men, men that are going through the tunnel. You know, for those who are familiar with Alison Armstrong and the Keys to the Kingdom and, and Queen's Code, whether you're a man or a woman, she describes the sort of the maturation of a man as going from a, a I think it's a pauper to a, a knight, to a prince, to a king, and then sometimes to an elder. So there's five steps and it's kind of linear for men. For women, it's boo -doo 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 all over the place, which isn't, is not a bad thing. It's just different. But for men, it's a linear process in that somewhere between 35 and 45 or so, men um, go through what she calls the tunnel. And that is when you are um, trying to grow from a prince to a king. And oftentimes during that period of time, you're looking at your life and you're not where you want to be. You're not the CEO of the company or a basketball star or whatever it is that you intended to be, or, or maybe you are, but it's not fulfilling. 
and you go through this questioning phase of life and it's it's she calls it the tunnel and she says it lasts about six months and the guys don't know what to do during that time and they're if they're in a relationship their partner doesn't know what to do and sometimes they go do stupid things it messes up life i went through that tunnel and it was rough but I have that experience now of going through that. And I want to be able to help men that uh, uh, might be in that place. And then I've recently discovered or, or thought about is that I think there's another tunnel that happens toward the end of your maybe working career, you know, when you're contemplating retirement or you have retired. You know, they say that for people that retired, if they don't have like a hobby or something to do when they retire, uh, the average lifespan after retirement is like six months. I have lots of things to do, so I don't worry about that. But there is a tunnel that exists. And again, it's hard on the man and it's hard on um, a relationship and a partner. And so those two kind of tunnels, and I think that you could be in a tunnel anytime, quite truthfully, but I think that there are strategies. I'm going to say even more than strategies. There's some processes. And the more and more I think about it, the more I believe it's an inner and inward a journey, a spiritual journey, a process that's really important. And that all these things that maybe, maybe the tunnel in itself is something that's actually really important to point you toward this journey that uh, we're meant to take at some point in our lifetime. And I'm in it. I'm doing it. I've been in it before. And I've got a lot of tools and techniques and coaches, mentors that are helping me through this process. And I'm putting it all together and I'm creating something special for men in, in 2025. So I know I have a lot of women that are our followers uh, because of a previous network marketing company that I was in or I had to friend a uh, bunch of women through uh, selling uh, athleisure wear, women's athleisure wear. Um, but most of those women are in relationships or have relationships or no men that uh, probably should. And you can't tell them you should do that, but somehow become creative that you got to connect with Robert in his Live and Rad and Love and Contagiously men's program coming in 2025. So that's kind of an advanced commercial. And for the men that uh, follow, I got something really special for you. I think it's going to be really life-changing. It certainly is for me. That's what I'm doing. That's where I'm headed. I don't know where I'm headed other than I'm going to be living rad and I'm going to be loving contagiously. I'm going to be following the clues, the intuition, the messages that I see in life and uh, creating something really special. I know that each and every one of you that are listening if you made it this far, you're thinking about, you know, well, how can I do that? Robert, he's kind of retired. He seems to have some money. He just kind of like does whatever he does whenever he wants. I can't do that. I've got a family. I'm working. I'm doing this. Like You can do that even where you're at. I happen to be doing it in a, a way that, you know, I'm hoping is inspiring for people and that you can get to that place and I can help you get to that place. But more so, um, you know, we have a lot of time within our lives where we can go into a contemplative place. That's what I really want to emphasize to people is that there are so many different ways to get there. Just be on that journey. Eventually turn from external focus to an internal focus if you haven't done that already. I know there's a lot of people that are advanced and I'm talking to uh, sort of the choir, but there's a lot of people that aren't. And if you're one of those people that aren't, let's do that. Start thinking about how can I turn my attention, whatever time I have to have attention, to an inner journey, to a place of awakening, becoming alive, becoming awakened, becoming enlightened. You know, those words are used by sort of the spiritual community and, and probably, I don't know, ways, but maybe they're descriptive for you. If they work, they work. If not, they don't. To me, it's it's becoming alive. It's it's living rad and loving contagiously. Those are my words. I want you to come up with whatever it is for you. And if you like a play on words, you know, use your name, first name, last name, middle name, anything that you like and create a, a juicy and delicious path for you that allows you to go on your inward, your spiritual your journey to create the the person that you were meant to be that that you came to the earth that you were born to discover and i'm here to help if i can
uh, reach out to me. Again, men's program 2025. I still do hypnotherapy and coaching for people. So you know how to find me. I'm easy to find. In fact, you pretty much know where I am every day of the year. All you have to do is look at my Facebook and you can tell where I'm at. So uh, reach out if you uh, have some challenges and maybe we could help you. In the meantime, I send you lots and lots of love. Just be loving. Know that you are loved, loving, and lovable. Know that you are worthy. You are more than enough and you are deserving of the life that you want to be. And even if it's just to live rad and love contagiously, <laughs> I love that. And I love whatever you do. Just love whatever you do. And that would probably get you more than halfway there. <laughs> Bye for now. 